and do schoolwork, okay? And be in the band. Earth and I get married before school is over. We are over, right? So my parents come down from the Lang City to take me home, you know, to come to graduation and whatnot. And my aunt is there and whatnot. And we have dinner. And so I explain to them, you know, that I'm married and whatnot. And I'm not going to be going home, okay? So that summer, now I'm really playing because see, I got to make some money. And so I'm playing with, with Skip Pearson. There was another band. There was a jam session in Columbia, South Carolina. And I remember going up and sitting in and playing at this jam session. And, and as on the strength of that, I got another gig with a, a, with a, a group called Cornelius Crawford and the Entertainers. Cornelius Crawford was an organ player. He had mm. his own organ. And I got the gig first, and I got my wife in on that gig. So, and then, then there was another woman who he had on the gig, so there were two of them, two vocals, vocalists, me and a saxophone player. And so with that band, and then Skip's band, we were doing a lot of playing. You know, Incredible. In, 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 you know. And then I got a job as a band director at Greeleyville High School. Well, actually, no, it was Greeleyville. It was, it was called Williamsburg County Training School. Mm. It was the black school, okay? There were two schools. One was black school, one was the white school. Right. And we didn't mix, and it was a small town. Greeleyville, South Carolina, yeah. 1967. And, and so in 1967, you would say that was the beginning of you being an educator. Well, yeah, I mean, that was my first gig in education, yeah. in music education, because yeah. my degree was in music education. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And I, and I, and I wasn't going to do anything else but music education. Right. And that was the beginning of your journey. The, the, as, as a music educator? Yes. Okay. But I'm still playing. Right. <laughs> so right. so it, it happened concurrently, you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I really wanted to highlight that beginning of your, your education career. Yeah. Because... Uh, that's, I think that's paramount to the kind of information I really want to get from you yeah. is that, uh, that the fact that you did become a, 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 a music educator yeah. and uh, up until this very day. Yes, right. That's right. So, uh, and I, and I really wanted to, I mean, to highlight that. Both, both worlds, both worlds. Yes. You know, music education, music. Okay, well, actually, when you look at it, I'm a music educator. What comes first? Music, boom. Exactly. That's it. Educator, okay? So, yeah, man. So, so it, was, it was a consolidated school. So, it was, it was elementary, middle, and high school under one roof. It was a big campus, okay? And it was pristine, man. It, our school was superior to the white school. I mean, Incredible. Superior to the white yeah. school. In, in in not only in education but in the physical plan of the school. I mean, the the, the lawn was manicured. The the the, 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 the uh, floors were were shiny. I mean, this was really good school. Yeah, yeah. And and then I used to write arrangements for the band. You know, I used to write James Brown arrangements for the band. <laughs> I, oh, when James Brown came out with another. Uh, 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 CD, another CD. Listen to me, another forty-five. Or exactly. You know, I'd get the music and I would, I'd write it because I'd always been able to write, always been able, to, yeah, to to arrange and whatnot. So I would do that for the band. Wow. Now, how old were the students? The high school students. High school students. The oldest kid was probably sixteen or seventeen. Yeah. You know? I got a quick question for you, and I asked this question to all of the music music educators that I meet. Uh, do you subscribe to the notion that when a student learns music, that that makes them better in all other subjects? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They do. They, they, you know, and I mean that's proven. You know, that's uh, that's that's scientifically proven that um, that music tends to um, tends to make the intellect stronger, whatever, however you want to say it. But, but you know, it's proven that way. You know. Um, but yeah, I had I had I had I had an elementary band, I had a middle school band, and I had a high school band. Yeah. Okay. And the high school band was the marching band, the concert band, and all that stuff. Okay. Um, uh, and so, um, so so, you know, I had kids 
you know, I had young kids, I had kids, you know, older kids, I had, I had kids who used to come, who used to walk a couple of miles from the farm with Duba on the show, with yeah. Duba on the show to band practice on Saturday. Incredible. You know what I mean? So they were dedicated. They were dedicated, but then, you know, I, I remember, I remember, um, um, writing ABC for um, the, the, the Jackson 5 when they did ABC. Exactly. I did, I did an arrangement of that. You couldn't buy these arrangements. Right. Uh, there was another one, I'll Be There. Yeah. I remember doing that. Yeah. You know? Um, I remember doing I'm Black and I'm Proud. Yeah. You know, I, I, doing all this stuff. <clears throat> the kids loved it yeah they loved it and and you know they wanted to be in the band because we were playing stuff yeah you know what i mean you know and we go to to, to various schools you know to play <clears throat> and man you know the, the the we were the top band okay so this is this is greenville south Carolina. but now meanwhile <laughs> school is over on friday me and my wife would get in the car on Friday afternoon and go make the gig and sometimes the gig is a uh, hundred miles away from where we playing. Incredible. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so now we gotta go there and then we gotta get back home to uh, you know, in that by by Monday morning sometime I'm you know. <laughs> so tell me something about tell me a little bit about some of the venues that oh, you played man. in. Oh man, we played all over the place, man. We played you know, there, there were a couple of places a place called um Oh, there was a nice place that we played. It was called the, um, oh, shoot, the Ponderosa, I believe it was called, mm -hmm. um, in Columbia. Uh, but the, but I remember, <laughs> Skip used to find all these places to play. I mean, he was a go-getter. And I remember going down to this place, it was like, like there was, was, was this bar, you know, and, and in, the, in the crossroads. One road would go this way, one road would go this way, and the bar was right there. Yeah. And it was sawdust on the <laughs> and, and they put a rope, you know, from one. And so we played in the area behind the rope, and nobody could come across the rope. Oh, man, it was crazy. Incredible. You know what I mean? And we played, man, and played, and and and, and Skip played, played that Junior Walker thing. He was he was into Junior Walker, and he could play that mm. that. And people love that stuff, man. You know what I mean? And we play honky tonk. You know? Yeah, because those were the popular tunes yeah, of the day. People love that stuff. You yeah, know? Like, but we'd also play some other stuff. You know what I mean? But but that's what Skip was doing. Skip was a you know the saxophone player, and he tried to sing too. You know? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, man. So so uh, yeah, and and that was on the weekends. Now the weekend is over. Now I got to go back and teach. That's right. You know what I mean? And that's then right. We, and then we had this house. My wife and I we rented this house. Man, it was a big, huge house. So I would get the guys to come down to Greenieville for rehearsal, you know. Skip would come down from Orangeburg. The organ player would come up from, oh, where did he live? He lived, it wasn't as far as Charleston, but he would come up from where he lived, you know, and the drummer would come down with Skip, you know. And we'd make a weekend of it, man. They'd come down Friday, and we'd rehearse Friday, and then we'd rehearse all Saturday. You know what I mean? And yeah. then Sunday, then they leave and going back to the various places, and they bring the wives down. We'd have parties, and whatnot, and go in the back and rehearse. You know what I mean? Incredible. Yeah. It was, so it was like you just created this whole music scene yeah. in South Carolina. Yeah. Well, I mean, it wasn't just me. I mean, I. But you were part of part of that music. Absolutely. Scene. Part Absolutely. Of that, you know? And uh, and so yeah, so we did that. But after a while, man, let me tell you something. <laughs> the, the, the 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 national pastime down in 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 Greenville, South Carolina, was drinking. Yeah, was drinking. Yeah, and so in order to be accepted, I, so I thought I had to drink too. You know what I mean? And so you know, and after a while, I thought, man, look, I need to get up out of here. Yeah, <laughs> because yeah. I, this is four years, right? Right. Four years. I'm down there. I'm like, no, this can't be all it, it is. You know what I mean? You know, and then my wife wanted to have a family, and she's like, look, you know, the the, the hospital is is two hours away. You, you know, right, right. And so I'm thinking, let me get up out of here. And so, what I did, this is funny, you know, um, 
the, the you know you you get the the, the Afro American newspaper down there, right? Yeah, yeah. Open ass Afro American newspaper one day, and I see all these teaching jobs. They were all listed. They were listed. I mean, you know, the, um, uh, ads. Talk about they, some of the places. Oh man, that the ads were listed. Well, I tell you, man, I, I had offers. I had an offer in uh, Carteret, New Jersey. I had an offer in California. I had an offer in um, uh, in 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 um, uh, Wilmington, Delaware. Um, and I had an offer in Baltimore. I had four offers, you know, um, that, it, it, and, and I had sent, I mean, it, you know, New York, um, in some places I didn't want to go to Kentucky. I'm like, no, I ain't going to Kentucky, you know what I mean? You know, but, but, but all of these ads were in this paper, and I sat down and handwrote, I mean, I, I didn't type, you know, so I would handwrite these letters to the to these wow. two, and I got I got letters back from these places, and so when we got ready to move, I had a job. Well, well, well my wife and I went to Carteret, New Jersey. We saw the band, the, 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 the plant there. We went to um, we went to Delaware. We went to Wilmington, Delaware, um, and and then I even I even had an offer in Atlantic City. Interesting. You know, the band director was leaving, and and. They asked if I'd take the job. I had I took the job in Wilmington, Delaware. So yeah. In fact, my wife and I moved to Wilmington, Delaware, and get all my stuff, you know. And I go to Lang City, and that, that's when I get this gig playing at the at, at the at the Cotton Club in Atlantic. In Atlantic City. Yeah. And and so you know, and we had to write all our music and whatnot. And um, and so before the summer was over. Baltimore contacted me. And see, here's the deal. I wanted a high school band. I, because I figured, I figured with a high school band, I could write charts. You know, we could play jazz. You know, right. I, mean? I couldn't do that much in a middle school, you know. You see, because I figured the high school kids were, more, were, were ready for that. Right. But the only gig in Wilmington, and Wilmington was close to Philadelphia, New York, you know, I figured if I if I got that gig, then I'd be closer to the music. Right. You know. But I didn't particularly want a middle school band. I didn't want a middle school. You know, but I was going to be a middle school band director. And they and I said, well, no high school. I said, well, no, no high school. But if you do a good job, and you, you know, and high school opens up, you can get a high school. Okay. Baltimore had a high school. Yeah. And I went down to Baltimore, walked into Edmondson High School. I'm like, this is it. Wow. You know, I had a, I had a band room, I had practice rooms, I had a, I had a, a grand piano in the in the band room. You know, I had all these instruments. I had at that time it was they had an orchestra. I didn't have an orchestra, but there, there was the residuals from the orchestra, basses and violins mm. and all that stuff. And I'm like, yeah, let's do this. So so my father helped me break the contract in um, in Wilmington. And I signed the contract in Baltimore. I came to Baltimore. That was that was in the summer of 1971. Wow! And you've been here. I've uh, been here since ever 71. since. In 71, we we bought this house in 78, and then I got the job down at the University of Maryland Eastern Shore. Yeah. You know, and actually, what what I found out was they needed they needed a band director. One of my students who graduated from Edmondson went down. He was a saxophone player. And when he gets down there, the band director's gone. He calls me up and says, Mr. Lampkin, there's no band director down here. You need to come down here. Incredible and story. Like, you know, yeah. and so he says, he, and so I said, well, tell the, the, the department chair, you know, yeah. to call. Man. So anyway, now, meanwhile, my record had come out, okay? My first record had come out, you know, the one I showed you on the, on the wall. Right, and what's the name of the record? The record's hot. Called Hot. Yeah. You know, so the first record comes out. So, Who's on it? Well, let me see. Um, Gary Thomas is on it. Uh, Tim Murphy's on it. Mark Cohen's on it. Tony Bunn is on it. George Gray is on it. Gaynell Coburn is on it. My wife is on it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, one, of the, one of my former students from Edmondson High School, whose name is Van Gray, Harlan Gray, he's on it. Um, Daryl Stokes was on it. 
So now you got this record out. Okay, so let me say. So, so you got you got this record out. Yeah. So now, how is that affecting, or if it does affect your teaching? Is there is uh, is there like a is there like a like a crossroads there? Let me tell you. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. So that, my student, who's down in South, the down at UMES now. Meanwhile, I, I I've gotten my master's from Morgan. Right. In music education, you know, and so I'm kind of looking for a college anyway. I'm like, you know. Maybe it's time for me to get in a college situation. Nobody was biting. You know, I'm sitting out letters and whatnot. Nobody's biting. So there's no band director down at UMES. So, and he, t that my student tells the department chair about me, you know. And so he said, yeah, he, he plays trumpet and whatnot, you know, and he has a record out. And so the, the, the department chair said, well, let me hear the record. So he goes and gets the record, because I had given him one, I guess. Right. Gets the record, brings it in, gives it to him, and he plays the record. He is the record. He tells, he tells him to get in contact with me and have me call, and I did that. You know, I didn't know that story until... Later on. Yeah. Well, I told you that I played over here at the, at the uh, Phase 10. I had a jam session over there once I retired. Right. Well, the kid comes in, and he tells me that. You know, we hug and whatnot. And he, wow! And so then so I you find so out that story years, years later. later. So, Incredible. so yeah. So I, you know, I, I, I grabbed him and I said, "Man, I said, really appreciate, you know, how you hooked me up." He said, "Me?" He said, "You know, Mr. Lambert, I didn't hook you up. Your record did." Incredible. <laughs> like, what? He said, "Yeah, when I bought the record in to give to Dr. Johnson, he heard it. He said he wanted you. You know." Wow. And I'm like, what? And that's how it went down, man. It's, that is yeah, so interesting. Know, yeah. So, 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 you know, during the time I was at Edmondson High School, man, I'm playing all over the place. I had, you know, when I first got here, I went over to the Sportsman's Lounge, you know, and I met all the guys over there, Carlos Johnson and Mickey Fields and, 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 and Johnny Polite, and, you know, and, and, and um, the, the piano player, uh, Bill Bird, and, and you know, uh, um, uh, all the cats, man. You know, I met at the Sportsman's Lounge. Yeah, and yeah. then and then I met Carlos Johnson again. Carlos was playing the Bryce's, incredible. Bryces, you know, and so I would go and sit in with them and whatnot. Wow. You know, before you get what? into the rest of your story, That's right. I gotta stop. Okay, and we're gonna go to part four. There we go. Go to part four. We got. I gotta stop you. We go <laughs> yeah. to part four and. and it, John Lampkin, it's such a wonderful pleasure speaking with you, man. Your stories are amazing. Thank you, man. And, uh, you know, you being an educator is near and dear to my heart. A person who, who, who trains students and people in music, it's just, so, it's just a wonderful journey, and I'm glad you're sharing it with me, and thank you so very much. Thank you for, for thinking about me, man.